Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. Right now I want to tell you a little bit about panning and what it can do for your tracks. I get a lot of questions from confused newer producers that are wondering how to make their drum tracks sound a lot more spacious. A lot of the time these people are making the mistake of always leaving every element of their track, whether it be drums or melody or whatever, panned directly down the center of the spectrum. This is an easy mistake to make, especially when you're writing the track and you're not thinking about the mix too much. However, at some point you're really going to want to think about the stereo image of your track and start panning things around in order to give them their own space in the stereo spectrum. The way to achieve that, as you might have guessed, is to use a panning control on any of your devices or even here in the Ableton Live interface with this knob right here. Right now I want to show you how to do panning within a device. I'm simply going to load up an impulse into my MIDI track here. I already have a drum pattern laid out and ready to go in this MIDI clip. I'll play it back for you. As you can hear, things are generally pretty well balanced volume wise, but everything is panned dead center, and so some of the elements are clashing with each other a bit. A great way to get around this problem and make your mix sound a lot more professional is to pay attention to panning the individual elements of your drum track in a logical way. I'll double click here and you can see the individual drums that make up my kit. As you can see as I click through each one of them, they are indeed panned dead center. The main thing to consider when you're doing basic panning is to pan certain elements of the track in ways that play off of other elements. Now when I was playing this back, I noticed that these two tom drums are playing off of one another in kind of a call and response fashion. Therefore, it makes sense to pan these opposite to one another. This is a really basic technique. So basically, one drum is the call, and the other drum is the response. So I'm going to go ahead and play this back. Now already, panning those two sounds in such a subtle way made a very big difference in terms of the stereo spread on the track. If you keep doing that with your other elements, you'll end up with a much more powerful drum track. Let's keep going through and panning the sounds. So a good rule of thumb is to pan all your low frequency sounds dead center. So we'll leave the kick going on no pan. Next I want to focus on the percussion and the hi-hat sounds. They're triggering at almost opposite times to one another and therefore it makes sense to pan them opposite to one another as well. And there we go, we've made another improvement to the stereo spectrum. I panned the percussion 11 left and the hi-hat only 9 right. Last but not least, I want to pan the shaker and the snare away from one another because they seem to be doing somewhat of a call and response as well. And there we are, with just a little bit of basic panning We've filled out the stereo spectrum a lot more than it was originally, and consequently the individual elements of the drum track are standing out from one another a lot better. I'll see you next time for more audio production tips and tricks. Stay creative!